First, uh, electric vehicles, uh, why are they important? What's the problem? First question uh, is how do we get around? Uh, how did you get here today? How did you get to, to school? How many of you, how many of you walked? How, how, okay, uh, how many of you walked here today? Uh, how many of you took a bike? Uh, how many of you drove? Uh -huh. uh, how many of you carpooled? Uh, a few. How many of you took the bus or mass transit? A few. Most of you took cars. And cars and even our transit systems all require fuel. Uh, almost all of the fuel we use uh, uh, for, for our vehicles is oil. It's over half of our total energy consumption. Oil is expensive, it's polluting, and it's imported. Um, importing oil and other products isn't necessarily bad. Uh, we import lots of things, we export lots of things, and, and the goods we export, somebody is obviously importing them. But the U.S. imports two-thirds of its oil. That's double the amount of oil we imported in 1973. Uh, why do I mention 1973? Does anybody know? That was what? Embargo. Yeah. Oil embargo. Very good. That was our, I know that was before all of you were born, but uh, your parents will remember it. Uh, it was, I certainly remember it. Uh, uh, it was the first oil embargo. Uh, and at that time, it had catastrophic impacts on our economy. Uh, we had long lines for gasoline. Um, could be in a uh, line an hour or more waiting to fill up your gas. Prices doubled literally overnight. Uh, they went from the equivalent of today is 3.75 or so for a gallon of gasoline to $7.50. Uh, had a devastating impact on our economy. And yet at the time, we imported half of what we import now. We imported about a third, between 25 and 30 percent of our our oil was imported. Um, a few years later, 1979, uh, we had a second oil embargo, and our uh, oil imports had increased to 50 percent. So we were in m more vulnerable, and it had another devastating impact on our economy. Well, after the second oil em embargo, uh, our country took some actions. Uh, we eliminated most of the oil used for generating electricity. Um, we st used more coal and used natural gas. Uh, we also uh, imposed vehicle mileage standards for the first time uh, on car manufacturers. Uh, and our country started to make some progress in the early 1980s. We reduced our total consumption of oil and reduced our percentage of imports to under 20%. We were making real progress. But in the late 1980s, things started growing again. And throughout the 1990s, our, our rate of oil imports and usage increased uh, steadily upwards. We, we now use uh, 20 million barrels of oil a day, and about two-thirds of that's imported. The U.S. has 2 to 3 percent of the world's, uh, world's oil reserves. We have about 5 percent of the population, but we're using 25 percent of the world's oil. Now, at one time, that was sustainable, but as countries like Russia, China, India, and others are modernizing our economy, their economies, that is simply not sustainable. In addition, there's significant environmental damage caused by oil and by coal, which is our nation's primary source of electricity. Uh, there's impacts of, on smog creation, uh, visibility, uh, air quality, uh, health impacts, uh, and these are def quantifiable and definable, uh, even aside from the question of greenhouse gases, uh, which, which they also emit substantial amounts of. Last week, President Obama st stated as a goal uh, to reduce greenhouse, or excuse me, to reduce our oil imports by a third by the year 2025 through increased mileage standards, energy efficiency, renewable energy, electric vehicles, uh, and producing more U.S. domestic oil. That, three, uh, that would be three to four million barrels of oil a day, which is about the amount we currently import from the Middle East and North Africa. And meeting those targets, if we can meet them, which won't be easy, would have benefits to the environment, to our health, to our energy security, and economic benefits as well. So where do electric vehicles come in? Electric vehicles can be an important part of the answer. Um, let me, we have a number of options, and so technology's been changing, uh, changing very rapidly in the last few years. 
uh, and changing quite a bit from where we were 10 years ago. First, we have uh, what I call standard hybrid vehicles. Uh, the Toyota Prius, the Camry, the Highlander, Honda Insight, uh, certain models of the Honda Civic, the Ford Fusion and Escape. Uh, the better hybrids, uh, in terms of mileage, will get you anywhere from 30 to 50 miles per gallon. Uh, they're a combination of electric battery that runs in the city, uh, where, where typically your, your mileage is worst. That's where the advantage is uh, from the electric uh, motor in the car. And then they can also use gasoline so that you can uh, travel highways, same distance that you do on, another, on a uh, regular gasoline car uh, and use and refill at gasoline stations. In the year 2000, there were less than 10,000 hybrid vehicles in the U.S. Now we have 1.4 million. Uh, Oregon is the number one state per capita for hybrids with over 14,000. Uh, costs used to be higher, substantially higher for hybrid vehicles. Now they're essentially the same as standard cars. And in fact, both the federal and the state tax credits uh, for standard hybrids ended last year. Uh, so we've seen some significant progress there. Now the next stage we're, we're seeing, and we're seeing them kind of simultaneously, is uh, on parallel tracks is what are called plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or PHEVs, as you sometimes see it in the literature, and pure electric vehicles, uh, pure EVs. Uh, Plug-in hybrids use substantially less gas than standard hybrids. Uh, electric vehicles use, use no gas. Uh, plug-in hybrids, we've got some models now. Uh, the, new, the Chevy Volt is an advanced plug-in hybrid. Uh, there'd be a Toyota Prius model. They give you the same range as a gasoline car, uh, but, uh, but use the uh, uh, electric part of the engine uh, a more significant part of the time. Uh, electric vehicles, pure electric vehicles, uh, so Nissan Leaf, uh, Ford Focus will be out later this year. Uh, Toyota is developing a Prius model that will also be a pure electric vehicle. Uh, electric vehicles uh, don't use gasoline at all. They have no emissions. Uh, one drawback is a limited mileage range, although that mileage is improving. Uh, the batteries for the new models will go uh, as, as much as 100 miles without recharging. Um, most of the companies are using lithium-ion batteries, but they're looking at lots of different technologies, uh, including nickel metal hydrides and other combinations. Uh, the costs for both plug-in uh, hybrids and for pure electric vehicles are substantially more expensive than uh, standard hybrids or pure gasoline cars. Uh, the, these cars are generally in the, for a comparable model to a, a standard car that would run in the low 20s, 20,000 dollars or so, uh, these are double that. They're in the 40s. Um, with federal and state tax credits, um, it brings the cost down to the low to mid 30s. Uh, so it's still uh, substantially more than, uh, than a standard hybrid, but it's, it's getting more affordable. And I think those costs are going to continue to drop. Uh, there's a need for charging stations, obviously, if you have either a plug-in hybrid or an electric vehicle. Uh, and there are three types at this point. Um, uh, the first one is level one. It runs on normal household current, 120 uh, volt current. It takes uh, eight to 12 hours and uses standard electric wiring. Uh, those run two to three thousand uh, dollars. And there's uh, state and in some cases federal tax credit support for all of these uh, to help to reduce the cost. Um, level two requires uh, more advanced wiring. It takes uh, 240 volt current. It takes four to six hours, and those uh, run up to $5,000 in cost. Uh, 